the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today we're celebrating the memorial of the Holy Guardian Angels. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who in your unfathomable providence are pleased to send your holy angels to guard us, hear our supplication as we cry to you, that we may always be defended by their protection and rejoice eternally in their company. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, See, I am sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and bring you to the place I have prepared. Be attentive to him and heed his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not forgive your sin. My authority resides in him. If you heed his voice and carry out all I tell you, I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. My angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. The word of the Lord. The Lord has put angels in charge of you to guard you in all of your ways. The Lord has put angels in charge of you to guard you in all of your ways. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The Lord has put angels in charge of you to guard you in all of your ways. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. The Lord has put angels in charge of you. His faithfulness is a buckler and a shield. You shall not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that roams in the darkness, nor the devastating plague at noon. The Lord has put angels in charge of you to guard you in all of your ways. No evil shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all of your ways. To guard you. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do his will. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child over, placed it in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one child as this in my name receives me. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven always look upon the face of my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. We're celebrating this beautiful memorial of the holy guardian angels. It's a reminder for us of this tremendous gift that we have of the angels. It's not just a children's fairy tale, but it's, it's a true gift that has been given to us. The, these, they are all a true gift that have, has been given, have been given to us. The, these mighty beings, not just fleeting things, but mighty beings who I love the description in the gospel are always looking upon the face of our Heavenly Father as they watch and guard over us. That itself means something very beautiful. So, the, of course, that word angel means messenger. So, in a way, the message that these angels are always giving us is the vision that they have of the Father. And in that way, in a way, they are seeing, they see most clearly the way that our Father sees us. They see his true will for us. And for that reason, they are a tremendous guide. They see the goodness, his beauty, the Father's deep desire for us. So we can always lean into the, the beautiful and powerful wisdom of the angels. We can listen to them quietly as they, as they proclaim to us God's desires for our life. There's, a, of course, a tradition in our church that we can befriend our angels. I remember growing up learning that you can, you can ask, I think there's a novena to pray to discover your angel's name. I've never done that, but that's one of the traditions of our, our church that we're able to do. Um, of course, we believe that they are real. I, I heard last year this beautiful story, I think I shared it with you. I'll just share it again about the relationship of St. Jose Maria Escrivá with his angel. So throughout his life, he began to, de to um, develop a devotion to his guardian angel, which is really beautiful. He even dedicated just a day of the week to just to try to increase that devotion. And so he would pray to his guardian angel on that particular day. And for us, we could, we could pick whatever day we wanted if we wanted to do something similar just a day to grow closer and to have a conversation with the angel. But there was one day, so he lived in Mexico during a time of great persecution, um, and there he was known as a priest, and there was a time, a, a kind of a, a, a confrontation that he had with someone else, and this person was coming at him to do him harm. And suddenly there was someone that stepped up and got in the way that protected him ultimately, from experiencing any harm. And he, I think Jose Maria, St. Jose Maria thought that he, his life had been spared and saved that day. But then this person who had stood up in the way turned around toward him, got up close, and whispered into Jose Maria Escriv into his ear and said, mangy donkey, mangy donkey, which of course is a very strange thing for anyone to say. But it struck Jose Maria Escrivá because that was a very particular name that he referred to himself in the quiet of his heart. And the only other person who knew that was his spiritual director. It was, it was a name that he had, in a way, received in prayer that he called himself to just to maintain humility, to embrace humility, because he was an extremely talented man um, leading many, many people closer to God. 
This was a way that he called himself that just to remind himself that he was a servant and not to get too elated. But the only other person that knew that was his spiritual director, and so it struck. So I th he took it to mean that this person was his angel, of course, who knew those interior realities of his life. So the angels watch over us. They know us. They know the, the secrets of, of our life. And they also have this vision of God our Father for his desires for our life. So we listen to them more closely today. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, may the Lord continue to bless her efforts of evangelization and outreach. We pray to the Lord. For our public authorities, may the love of Christ penetrate their hearts as they seek to govern with justice. We pray to the Lord. For all who battle the sin of pride, may the Holy Spirit increase in them his gift of humility. We pray to the Lord. We pray for, for, all, for all young children, that they may grow in holiness and the angels might watch over them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all of those who have died especially for Kevin Dickinson, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they look upon the face of our Heavenly Father and join with all the angels. We pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, you created the world and all that is in it. We entrust our needs and concerns to you, who love us into being. We ask that you would hear these our needs through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings we bring before you as we venerate your holy angels and graciously grant that under their constant protection we may be delivered from present dangers and brought happily to life eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels. For the honor we pay the angelic creature, creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory. And by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of, of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As you are pleased to nourish us for eternal life with so great a sacrament, O Lord, direct us by the ministry of angels into the way of salvation and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.